Well, welcome to the Bridge Brick Show. Let's get in there and check out this Lego. This is Nick. I'm Harrison. We're going to be your guides. Let's go. First at the gate, we've got Johnny. Hey, Looking Johnny. Looking a bit busy with the punters. Hey, Johnny, we've already paid. Can we go in and check yeah, out your no show? No problem. Johnny, Bridge Bricks represent. So, Nick, where are we going to start? Let's start at table one, Harry, and take the punters around from the Technic cars and work our way down. I think that's a good idea. Who have we got here at the Technic table? Chris. G'day, Chris. Hello, Chris. Welcome How are you? Welcome to the Bridge Show. What have we got on display today? Lots of Technic 1 to 8 supercars. The Porsche in all the different colours. We've also got the Technic timeline starting from 1977 through 1980, 88. 94, so you can see the progression of the studded yeah. technique. The real early Lego. That's right. And, uh, and they've on. progressed quite rapidly, haven't they? These they last have. few years, they've really been pumping them out. They absolutely have, yes, the supercars. And then you gain, you've got the motorbike timeline through the sort of 80s and 90s with some mocks. And then a crowd favourite is the Holden Tirana. Ah, a bit of Aussie memorabilia. Nice job. That's right, absolutely. You yeah. had me at Holden. It. And a couple of engines. Yeah, some different engine types to show the kids how the different um, different types of engines function. Well done, Chris. And Cheers. what's your favourite of the builds? It's like your children, you can't say which is your favourite. <laughs> <laughs> Good chance. Good answer. Safe well, answer. As I build each one, it's my favourite, but then I build the next one and it becomes my favourite. So, yeah. Cool. That'll do it. We're going to move on table to table. Thanks for chatting. No all right, Harrison, looks like we've got a bit of HMAS activity here, a bit of... Got some Japanese bombers by the looks of it too, and uh, the lizard people have taken over the tank. Oh, of course. Classic. I am quite a fan, though, of the recolored Indiana Jones Jeep build in the light grey from the Bricktober uh, promotional pack, as well as the Comic-Con set. That's a very nice little nice uh, tribute there. Right, and it looks like this build may belong to Callum, who's not with us on the table, but... We will roll on to the next one. We've got so much to see today, we'll keep moving. Now, I must admit, I had a look at Graham's build earlier and I can already tell you my favourite part of it. It's me on an ostrich at what? the very uh, opening of the train uh, tunnel over there. I'm sure you added that later. After I had he was nothing here. to do with that. I will confirm. I'm impressed by all of his brown burps, right? Check out those big, ugly rock pieces just rolling out there. Anyway, the cavalry's here, obviously. Confederacy. Well, the Lego aficionados will know that Fort Legorito was actually an official set, so this has been upscaled yeah, from so that set. If the camera just comes here, they can see the Fort Legorado from this angle. The sign is there as well. Nice. No, some really good build quality time going in there. Now, these look like the Star Wars UCS sets as if Darth Maul got a can of spray paint and went to town <laughs> with them. I, I see MTROM written all over UCS Star Wars Lego, I love it. And I also believe these have travelled interstate to be here today. Yep, this is from Wollongong, the Gong Lug as they like to call themselves. So we're starting to collaborate now with a few of the other lugs and it's great to have them represent with Bridge Bricks. I got down to Gong Lug uh, in the other direction uh, at the start nice. of the year, so it's nice to have them up this end as well. Up. Indeed, making those connections. All right. Now, I believe there might be a little bit of bias on this build because it might have been partially built by yourself, Nick. Yes, yeah, so uh, I'm uh, responsible partly for this build, but I'll let the others, my co-builders, take over and tell us what's going on here. Okay, so we decided that we would build Mount Cotchmore, and this was the inspiration. So we've hidden all of these figures throughout the build, and we're challenging um, anybody to find them. Um, all right. That's... So... This build took a long time and a lot of effort, a lot of tears by Nick, um, and um, we're really proud of it. Now, I also believe that you guys have something like 100 base plates at the show today. How many of those are just in this? 40. 40. 40. That's a considerable amount of base plates. Yes. Do you have a favourite component in here, Marianne? Um, I quite like oh, the waterfall and those rapids. I like the kayaks moving, that's very well done, but I also am quite a fan of those tent designs down there. Aww. Marty, talk us through the tents. <laughs> <laughs> so the right, tents, I love you the tents. You can say that, Jake. They, they were really hard to build, 
and they're very fragile, but they are super cool. So mine's the blue one, Nick's is the green one, and Marty's is the orange one. All right, so Nick's got the king tent with the big size. Yeah, you the extra say we're in tents on Lego. <laughs> now, mm, I'd like to point out, of course, just to the right of the waterfall is the rainbow. the rainbow. And if Alan can come around and get the good angle from where Marianne's sitting. More importantly, I've noticed Ariel going for a swim with the dolphins. Yes, that's a highlight for the, the kids. Have you had anybody find all of the figures today? Yes, lots of people. Lots of people? So we, um, we decided this time that we'd um, just provide them with um, like a visual clues about what, where ah, they're, what they're Ah, that's smart. We'll have to save that for uh, next year's uh, Realms collaboration, which we'll get to a little bit later. Okay, well, thank you for coming in into our show. Our pleasure. We're going to keep shuffling down this way. Yep. Excuse us, gents. We're just going to push through Sorry, here. Sorry, guys. We're going to sneak on through. Stephen, you're doing a fantastic job. Now, I had a look over here as a Star Wars fan um, yeah. very early on, and one of my highlights was the uh, Imperial gunship build, which Steve, I believe makes its appearance in Rebels. a little bit. Um, well, most of the sets are bought sets, but a couple of them are redesigned versions of gunships, so that's a just a bit of a reimagined version with parts that I could get easier than the original. Um, and then same down there for a couple of the, the brickheads as well. Um, so I've got most of the Star Wars brickheads down the end here, but some of them are customs like Thrawn, General Grievous, Isla Sakura, and uh, the uh, Armourer. Uh, this is a little mock I've built as well, but basically all just sets you can purchase. For keen LEGO Star Wars fans though who know the investment market, I believe that's one of the very rare gentle giant uh, statues. It is, it is. Um, and it comes with a little Star Wars plaque there, but I broke it. Oh. <laughs> because the magnets came off and they went on the floor. Oh uh, well. Uh, the hassles of travelling with LEGO to yeah, the shows. Hey? It always falls off too. And here we have the Titanic. On display, minus the iceberg. I still reckon minus they should have included that. And Rose and, and the, the drop. It's okay, I heard she was 26. <laughs> she let go. Oh. Which was a mistake. <laughs> Seriously, uh, so, it's like yeah. Romeo and Juliet. That's it, the official Lego set, Titanic. Totally awesome. About 6,000 yeah, pieces, it's isn't it? 9,090 actually. Ooh, to be it's getting up there. Yes. And I don't think it's friendly. been replaced as the largest set yet, again. Next year. Next year we have a new set coming in. So this is currently the largest official Lego set? Officially, yeah. yes. In, in length wise and weight. <laughs> and pieces. And pieces. No, the Millennium, I think the Millennium Falcon just oh, okay. it out. My bad. There you go. Yes. Stu, how are you going? Good, Nick, how are you? Good, we're doing the Brisbane live show and we would like to have a look at your display and talk us through what have you got going on. Go. Uh, it's just a, um, it's a train layout, model train layout. So uh, three river crossings, so we've got three different types of bridges, uh, some campground, a bit of logging. Talk us uh, through the bridges, quick. Yeah, we've got a truss bridge, uh, a girder and a, um, uh, the old an, old trestle, log. an old trestle, old trestle bridge. bridge. Yeah, there. right, well done. Uh, yeah, a little bit of logging, some fall colours coming through, a little bit of fun with some pirates down the end. Uh, yeah, a few little gimmicks here and there. Yes. I, I do appreciate what you've done with the uh, camp out. Yeah, my little swags. Swags there, that's a good use of uh, NPU, isn't it? It is NPU, very much when so. you're looking for other pieces and you come across those and you go, well, those two together That'll look do. like they could make a tent. The other thing I quite like is the spiky trees that are upside down pieces for the flower stems. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Yeah. Although he's looking a bit shady back there. Ah, uh, you found the shady one. Shady character. There's We're... a couple of shady ones around. <laughs> We're oh, going to go find a few more. Let's do that. Now I believe our next display, he's currently in his retail booth. Okay. Uh, but this has also come from Interstate. And I have no idea what's going on because my eyes don't actually know what to look at wow. here but it's very intricately patterned. Millipede, centipede, this is definitely Rick's display, isn't it? No, it We're is. We're on Raymond. 
Raymond, yes. Ray, Ray's, yeah, Raymond, yeah, Ray's display. That's who, sorry, that's what I meant. Now, I think this might be slightly techno inspired from what I'm looking at. Nick, what do you reckon here has gone on? I see cube, Borg, I see patterns, I see a uh, really unique, original idea. And it's well executed. Very much so. It definitely grabs your attention right from the get go. And wow. it's got lots of different angles, so everywhere you look, there's a different bit. That is. Friends? No, I believe that's Princess Castle. Right. Oh, I suspect that's one of our junior members' builds. Yeah. As you notice, we go around, the red shirts are our adult builders of the club, and black shirts will be our junior members who are building. Um, we'll just keep moving towards the townhouses, Monaro Street. So obviously taken inspiration from a real life setting and executed well in Lego. I've also just noticed the uh, little Minecraft elements that are hidden as Easter eggs there as well. And I quite like the spear for the fences. There's some NPU from this builder. And why not some classic space Lego thrown in there on the airstrip? Aha. We have a variety here. How are you going? Good work, Hayden. Would you like to talk us through some of your builds? I see you've got a botanical corner to start with. Yes, botanicals there. Uh, basically, the main set's here, but this one on the end here is just a mixture of um, all three tulips, red roses, and one and a half botanical sets set in a... Formed your own bouquet out of several different botanical sets that are available. Yeah, yes, great. and it changes every time. Nice. So we Very come good. down here to the beach. The Aussie beach. Uh, this was the Christmas theme. Yes. And all you guys went snow white and I decided to do the Aussie one and have the summer one. Nice. So that's that one. Display of different trains here. Do to have a look at. Lovely and... This is the Chinese dragon boat race together with a Supernova Street Parade going through it. Some great movement going on. You've got the dragon pumping, you've got the Ferris wheel going. It's, uh... Yeah, and that's going to block the microphone. <laughs> oh, it will too. Yeah. The next one here is a um, scene that's done for an Animal Kingdom display, which is basically you've got the white dragon who's a naughty one. Right. He's destroyed his land. You can see how barren it is. He wants a good land of the other two. Ah. And they're fighting him to say, no way. We shall see the white dragon again in the realm section coming yes. up in the future. It's a very cool build, I must say. And you blend it nicely back into the Technic. Yes. Just to link, I've got my this is table here. one, almost complete. Yeah, this is my Technics and blends back into there to make it all look a uniform uh, display. Bricks, bricks display. Great joint effort. Let's well, that completes our table. first loop. I think we're moving on to realms next. Yes. Realms, let's go to realms. Okay. I think we should go pick on Marcus. Yes, we'll start with Marcus. So get around this side of the Marcus, pole. We're going Marcus, we're going to uh, interview going? you for Brisbricks Live. Oh, Welcome okay. to Brisbricks Live. Hello. You're going to introduce us to the realms of Brisbricks, our collaboration build. Yeah, well, look, this has been a great uh, initiative, actually. We've been wanting to do these sorts of things for a while to have more collaborative builds. So this is the, so we started off this year with the new Realms group, right? So Realms, castle theme, yeah. not surprising, maybe with a little bit of a fantasy thrown in here and there. So this is a collaborative build. We have approximately 15 or so people. They've got different modules and sections that they've built and obviously around a, uh, a, a castle theme. And you see how all the roads and different sections sort of interlock with each other, some better than others, but you know, that's a work yeah, in progress. Absolutely. So we've got a dozen of us involved in this yep, initial approximately, collaboration, yes. roughly. Yes. Yep. And we've already, I might add, we've already generated a lot of interest and it uh, looks like we're going to be bigger for next year. Yeah. Um, and I, I would say, well, we've already started the planning stage for next year, so bigger and better. All right. Now let's just take us through. Let's start at the, the, the King's Castle at the top of the build here that you've spent creating this magical landscape that covers, are we up to 49 base plates here? Uh, it's roughly 40, about right. 40 base plates. Nice, yes. very good. The, the detail's amazing. Thank you. Obviously, moats being created as well, well as you know, flowing. If you're going to have a castle, right? You've got to have, a castle has to have a moat. A Goes castle has saying. to have a drawbridge, has to have a portcullis. Uh, and so on. So you'll find all the, I've also done a bit of uh, research into the actual defensive structures of castles. 
So to give you a, an idea of the nuttiness of myself, I've actually <laughs> I've filled in some of the details actually in the buildings themselves. Yes. So there's a lot of defensive features you would find in a medieval castle. Uh, so you know, it, it, there's, it's, it's attention to detail, yep. and, and it's not just a shell. There is actually. Oh no, no, absolutely it not. It goes to the nth degree inside. Oh, so like, let's just take okay, this a quick one. Yep. We can just do a little bit of a quick look. Cutaway here. here, you can so, see. You know, the whole section, all the corridors and the and the walkways all interconnect, uh, and it's actually built to minifigure size. And we'll we we'll can bring you over here to get even better view. We'll just remove these to make it a little bit easier. Now, while he removes stuff, Nick and, and I have uh, used NPU, which means nice part use. It's one of my favourite parts here we of go. this build. So here's all of these little uh, shrubbery pieces. Oh, thank you very much. I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment. So here's the inside of the castle itself. Here we have the study. We have some visitors coming through. We have various defensive structures in the castle. So as you can see, no matter, not just because someone doesn't necessarily see any of it doesn't mean it's not there. Correct. Because, you know, I'm a nutter. I think I've said that once or twice, so we'll just reinforce that <laughs> hey, one. We're all nutters on different levels. It's all good. It's, it's very intense and, and it's deliberate and it's, it's very well executed. And it is interesting, the sorts of little details that people pick up on. Like, I have to admit, the pelican down here who's eyeing off the fisherman with the fish Strangely enough, it's, it's got a lot of commentary. I don't quite understand that one. Well, when you build a pelican, the pelican has hardly been seen in Lego that often. It's, uh, uh, it's no, very no, that, creative, that it's that very true. good. Also and very Australian, because I think for English in our schools, we still have Storm Boy as one of the yep, novels Percy that we study. The pelican, right? not, not to mention maybe a few seagulls around the place. Of course. Yeah, mine, 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 mine. Mine. Absolutely. Uh, and just for something also a little bit unusual, if we move around this side. Yes, take us on the tour. Let's go right around the realms, because you, well, well, you did do off, a lot uh, of the collaboration. We, we do have uh, Commander Zod uh, from the Zod Imperium, who's, uh, <laughs> who's uh, uh, you know, put, planted the flag, Planted the so flag in the cave? In the cave. I believe this used to be a bear cave. It might have been, but we won't <laughs> talk about the bear. Thank you, Nick, for bringing that up again. Well, it was don't, empty, is that what I meant? Don't, don't you have a no, bear on your display, yeah, Nick? It may, I may have borrowed it. It's a different colour, though, isn't yes, it? Yes, yeah, it yes. That's what you tell me, anyway. So, uh, another one of our collaborative builders was Stephen Bean. Absolutely. He's and busy on the train table. We might get to him later. He's actually running around as Captain Rex with our costumers. Right. And we have a number of features uh, that are, are prominent around here. Firstly, we have a... Um, a crushing the grapes uh, to get the wine and so on. We have, of course, the round table in a roundabout. The knights uh, of the round the table. Knights of the, but in a round, so Absolutely. notice the signs, right? Yes. So it's actually a roundabout. Very well uh, executed. Very, very thoughtful of them, yes. I think. We have the Lady of the Lake uh, holding the Excalibur from the water. Uh, we have a, a sorcerer of some kind doing things. We yeah, warlocky things. Warlocky yes. things. We best not talk about that. No. Now, most importantly, though, it's also the first amount of chickens that we've seen, and I believe that's the element of so the realm. So there might be a, a chicken a count a, going on. A unofficial competition of some kind that we try not to talk about too much of, of how many chickens there are on the realm's display. Yes, uh, there are more than you think. If uh, anyone can come up with that number, I'd love to know it. I would certainly be interested in that number. If, if we ever get to <laughs> it, it is a challenge. I might have to stop adding them while you guys count them then. <laughs> now next is, is our Peter's build. Yes, so this uh, a very a prominent uh, parade. parade. Well, I think it's more of a, more well, a, more a, more a rampage boy, actually. Oh, I, I, think, be. I think they're heading for a rampage. Right. I think it's a bit more than just a that they look like they're uh, well, they're packing bear and perhaps getting ready for a bit of a scuffle. I want to see him get over that mountain, to be honest. I'm anyway. a little bit concerned though that the archers have forgotten their arrows. Uh, <laughs> and, and there are a fair few dragons Hopefully, um, a couple. with them or, so you, you, you or against the, them, you're not really. I, I think it's but let's them. pan out because there is Andrew's dragons are the prominent centerpiece of the display. I, I don't know. I, I, could you call it prominent? I, well, I, I think it could have gone higher, personally. Yeah, it's, it's definitely standing out there, and, though, I isn't mean, it? How many dragons can one have? I, I, is, is there ever enough dragons? I say. Well, that's what Andrew says as well, actually. Well, so I, 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 I think he's made his point. But I do like how it's a pentagramic structure, so oh, well, it, it takes a little bit off stud, as we like to say, when builds aren't left square and working and, that and angle. let's not forget the tail disappearing up, up there, who knows what... How the, big could that centre mother long, of all dragons uh, be? Well, certainly mother of all dragon tails, that's for sure. <laughs> so how, now we bring down to... Whose display is this one? Oh, someone that we met at the, at the entry gate. Or, or someone who's 
he, steel spares? I, I don't oh, know. Oh, maybe. He, he worked... No, the, we're talking about the skeleton crew. Here's oh, Johnny, sorry. Johnny. I, Johnny. Johnny, Johnny that's Worthington, right. yes. Yes. We told you we'd meet this skeleton again, and I believe he has cocked his leg on that church, which we can't talk about I have any to further. Admit, I have had people comment on the... Uh, the, the, Abbey crossing, Road crossing. Uh, the Abbey Road crossing. Of course. Not that's, to that's forget, though, a, the Shakespeare tribute. It has been yes. a topic of discussion. Oh, yeah, um, indeed, yes, the Shakespeare To tribute. be or not to be. And in the centre, just while talking about tributes, uh, we do have a tribute to some well-known documentaries of medieval times. Of course. Uh, the Monty Python The Monty Python and the Holy sketches, Grail. which taught us more uh, about more, medieval than we I otherwise would have known. I learned everything I know from that. Correct. Uh, what is your favourite colour? Uh, now, see, there we go. You've, no. already, that, that's, that's, you've already failed. So, moving on, we, we have a very colourful and creative display down yes. this side. I may be responsible for this end of the table. You, are, are um, you? It's, it's, I, I think we have a red lions the, versus actually, the blue falcons sure in a tournament. Let's, let's be honest, it's the, not a battle. Uh, no, no it, it's, it's a friendly competition. It, it, is a, it, is a, it may turn into a battle in some... It is entirely future. possible that our previous uh, convoy is actually looking for a friendly competition. But, you know, you can't really guarantee that. They, they still look fairly serious. But right now, we do have a friendly competition. There, there is a lot going on here. Absolutely. No matter uh, where you look. I do like the minifig, and it has populated my build significantly. But um, really, it's about having miniature castles as opposed to your massive castle, I think, at this end of the display. You, you, you could say that the other one is large. Uh, I think it's more... <laughs> I, I'm impressed that there's actually still some space you haven't put a minifigure on oh, yet. Oh, did I miss somewhere? Yes, well, so here's it. one. Right yeah, here. okay, good you, point. You get a uh, I could have done better there. Now, Nick, for those people who are looking at this who are starting to think I'm overwhelmed, how will I ever get to this as a build point for people just starting out, would you like to run through how you've actually used the creator set solely to build your main castle here? Oh, yeah, yes, that's well, a, good a good point here, actually. So you can buy this creator castle set, and if you buy three of them, you can build a fortress. Now, it can be done in a couple of different ways. So I built it in this format, which was online. I didn't make this up, so I've actually taken some instructions to, to create that. And then my neighbour here did the same thing. So he bought it's three sets. They're quite different, though. And they? he built this version of a fortress. So they team up nicely together, but you can just see the variety that you can get by combining a couple of the same sets, and you can get a whole range of... Uh, well, it makes, it's the basics of the castle realm, isn't it? And, and that's and all we do. But this is this is the medieval oh, um, blacksmith. It's just been remodelled. It's been remodelled and remade uh, and created a whole new building. Yeah. And, and and let's not forget, this one comes with a chicken, whereas the, I don't think there is one on the other one, which is a, a point of note. Fair enough. But this one does have Scooby Doo. Oh, okay. Yep, Scooby oh, Scooby Doo. Right down I there. And notice. Shaggy too. He's even getting into character. I think they're looking for running some away, Scooby snacks. Uh, yes, I believe that is the direction they're going in. Harrison, I think we've stumbled across one of your uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. elements. We have, we oh, have no. another one of uh, Johnny. Johnny we've Johnny, forgotten Johnny. Johnny, 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 Johnny. Johnny. Who is the Johnny? Johnny? Where is Johnny? The great Johnny. Um, actually, I, one thing I do love about this is you look at the lava field there, and it really looks has a beautiful colour and texture to it. It really does look like lava. You wouldn't want to stand in there. Could you imagine if it lit up? I believe you, there's a concept for that. Oh, there we go. You're it looks giving for future. Johnny stick, no, future, are you? Future. For future. Future. No, no, future I'm giving you a plug. a plug. It's coming. Yeah, it's coming. However, anyway. we're now going to steal the thunder like it has all weekend and go straight to Toothless the Dragon. Oh, well, <laughs> Toothless. I mean, every, hasn't everybody been talking about Toothless? Have you, you, everyone, everyone. No. Okay. But, you know, it's great to see that he's made an appearance. I think we should all be very happy about that. Certainly Harrison is, aren't you, Harrison? I am indeed. I'm very proud of Toothless. But what I tried to do was just get as much pop culture into a castle as possible. So run us through as quickly as you can, Harrison. That, that's well, so unusual for you, though, isn't it? It is. I, I must admit, you... I also started Red my Sun, castle yep. with a uh, one of the creator castles and then rebuilt the skin around it. Okay. Uh, but we've got some 80s references for those at home. We've got uh, nice. Arnie at the back fighting a big monster, The Witcher, yes. Lord of the Rings, uh, How to Train Your Dragon, obviously, with Toothless, Red Sonja from the Marvel comics, and then there are some cursed pumpkins hidden around the corner as well. Any, any chickens on there, though? Harrison? There are chickens in mine. Uh, there's also one that's escaped that I believe last I saw was being uh, tracked down by one of the knights. What we really need is a zombie chicken, though, really, don't we? But anyway, moving on. I believe it's called KFC. 
<laughs> so this was Mary Ann's castle, my lovely partner. And oh, and this is a bit of a, a bit of bad guys in the realms. Well, you, you can't have good guys without bad guys. Correct. And you can't have bad guys without good guys. It is important for everyone to make their contribution in their different ways. And this is the very old Kingdoms collection of Lego. So several shields, scorpions. And I believe the original knights there are coming back to steal their shields from... Some of them do look like they, they could use a bit of a feed. They're looking a bit thin. I'm a little concerned for you, Nick, considering uh, the cage hanging on the side of the building. <laughs> That's my life. Yes, we now, we've had some nice infill done here, uh, and it's no, no, still it's a not, work in progress, it's infill, maybe. It's, it's creativity. It is, it is. But, no, we can't... Um, let's it's, say, it's water. Marcus and Adrian came to the party and, and filled a gap in our realms display. They, they certainly did, and this is a different Marcus, just, just for anyone Yes, else's. yes, not, not you, Marcus. No, a different Marcus. Mm. Marcus, he, think, he thinks he's a champ, doesn't he? Is that the one, or is that you? That would be a different one, oh, yes. Right. Right and, and our president's build of the club. Well, we're gonna make Claude. Oh, absolutely. And actually, this is uh, the harbour, I believe. Uh, absolutely, it's a harbour. In fact, there's a couple of really good features, I must admit, Claude, uh, being president of the club, that always does fantastic work. Um, and here we have, there's a, the, the waterfall at the back, but I will bring your attention, I have to admit, this is a, the, I am very impressed with it. These long boats do look absolutely brilliant. Um, and the whole water effect that's been done here, I believe it was Claude and or other members of the family that had a great deal of but input. They do on say this. loose bricks sink ships. So you know, thank, thank you for picking that up, Nick. What was that about the bear again? We'll get back to that later. So yeah, I mean the water effect here really is very impressive. It, it, it looks fantastic. A little high on the part usage and does take a little bit of time apparently, but but you get some real depth oh, of absolutely. Yes, colour it's and movement. across very it's nicely. Great. I have watched this actually come together in between working with our president on many of our other club projects. And I can also tell you the amount of time and effort that went into getting those buildings. Because like uh, Marcus's castle, he has also gone through and detailed stuff on uh, in indeed. there. Yes, there's uh, all on the insides as well. One of my personal favourites though is uh, Jack Sparrow coming out of the uh, wine shop. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, I'm into Robin Hood chasing the final chicken that we're trying to count across the rooftop. Oh, that's not the final chicken. No, oh, it's not a, the final no, chicken. There's quite a few more. That could be the first chicken. But either way, there are a the lot of chickens. There. Anyway, a nice global shot of the whole realms would be nice, uh, Alan, just so we can see how the water flows from one end to the other. We've incorporated a lot of builders here to come up with a 12 square metre realms, which next year you say is going bigger and better. Uh, that's the plan. We, and like I said, we have already started the planning process. So keep an eye out for that one. Looking forward to that. Let's move on to a new table, Harrison. What do we I got? think we should go annoy our resident Lego master. Let's go while well, he's not busy. Excuse us, resident Lego master. How's it going? We are doing Bruce hey. Bricks TV oh, thanks, live. Thanks, thanks, thanks. We're going to throw you under the bus super quickly, and yeah. you're going to run us through your display if you don't mind. How are you going? Let's jump out of your way there. What do you got for us? All right, so I've got this amazing masterpiece made by Brickman. Uh, this is. How did you get your hands on that? Yeah, this cost me a fortune. Ten weeks of my life. <laughs> no. This is um, not mine. Brickman did make it, though. Uh, so we'll Congratulations once again. Thank you. Inaugural winner of LEGO Masters. Yeah. So I've got a go-kart track. Um, didn't have enough time to, to motorise it this time, but it's, it's in and it's, it's working. It's functioned and it can, they can go. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's going to be... Um, uh, ah, breaking my own build here. This is why you aren't allowed to touch the models. Um, but you can kind of get a sense of how it works. So yep. we've got a go-kart track. Obviously, Henry and I made Brick Dad, brick, 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 uh, a book of dad jokes made out of Lego bricks. Love it. Um, I also made a brick built version. And um, you can hardly it. tell that that's not a book. That's yeah. brilliantly done. Yeah, um, so I had to make that, of course. Yes. Uh, and then. The piece of resistance, the, the yes. display piece. So this has kind of been in the boxes for the last year because unfortunately we couldn't display uh, last year. But this is what I could find of it. Um, this is my museum. I've been working on it for a while. Um, and yeah, it's basically a museum. It's loosely based on the London, London Natural History Museum. Um, some of the architectural elements are from Any that. Any Knights of the Museum elements in there for the movie buffs? 
on night at the museum. Yes. So yes, I, I, was, I was thinking about uh, you said knights, and oh, I was yeah. like, I was like, so I was got a realms influence right. hanging yes. over me. Yeah, I was like, hang on, there are. It was night of the museum, wasn't it? But there were several versions of it, so surely there were more than one night. That's true. Now, uh, being a Lego master, we have multiple NPUs, but the one that I have noticed that most times is the use of the minifigure headgear to make the snake yeah. skeleton from Ninjago, yeah. and also the glass panelling around the builds has been really well Thank integrated. You. Thank you. The thing that was probably the trickiest, because I mean, a lot of this architecture, because it's kind of an old style, is basically stacking. There's not a lot of technique beyond the, st the, the, the style, I guess. So how do you maintain that structural integrity then when you're... Um, you drive really slowly when you, <laughs> when you, you deliver your display. But the and thing, avoid corners. That's it. But the thing I had the most fun was, was getting these roller coaster tracks kind of integrated into the wall. Um, while they are obviously system, um, the way that they, like trying to hide as much of the join in the back here using uh, slopes and just like a lot of crazy stuff to get those working. Also, the other challenge was uh, Medium Nougat doesn't have a lot of inverted slopes. So like having to use tricks to use yeah. bricks upside down to get our art and the arches And very good cutaway, so it's open for the viewing public. There's a lot of detail buried inside there. Well done, yep. Kay. Thank you very much. Right. Hard, hard man to beat, obviously. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. And thanks for displaying with us, Thank too. Thank you. Okay, we've just got a couple of pieces that the club owns. Thor's hammer, a couple of swords. I'm taking this home with me for my archaeological collection. Let's move on. I think before we tackle the centre, we should probably cut left and swing round. What do you reckon? Let's do the outside lap. Now, I have been told that a lot of effort has gone into getting that Gundam to stand up. Um, so we won't shake the tables too much, as there will be a great deal of concern. But we've seen some build progress, and it's come a very long way. What do you think about that, Nick? Yeah. Looks about the same size as Voltron, doesn't he? It's a good scale replica of him. And then we've also got the expansion to the uh, new set that's been released by LEGO re pretty recently, uh, and that is the Thunderjaw, which goes quite nicely. It's been very well matched to the build style of that tall neck. Uh, that is still available if you like the look of that, but I think that one has a few modifications to it as well. No modifications to the tool neck. There we go. Another nice bit of pop culture. Uh, a second table display by our president. He's a bit of a boat collector, isn't he? Let's face it. Yes. Coming from someone who works with yachts, that man is boat obsessed. However, his pride and joy is that uh, particularly large mock, which is in the middle there, helmed by Davy Jones. He actually made all of the sails himself as well and I may know somebody who may have donated a few minifigures its way. Lovely. So he's had that since he moved all the way here from South Africa, and he is very happy to have it on display again, I have been told. Excellent. But he is also a castle uh, nut, which is why he has a, a few little references for his pirates over in his uh, bay over there as well. But one of the things that is the funniest for me, as someone who loves the Pirates of the Caribbean movie, is his tribute to the third movie, and that is the Black Pearl exclusively captained by Captain Jack Sparrows. <laughs> That's a lot of Captain Jack Sparrows when they I do like, on a non-Lego related term, the uh, tablecloth use to supply all the waves. It's uh, That was it made by his lovely wife yes. Jolene, who does a lot of sewing at home. So and it just makes all the ships pop rather, rather neatly. It's very clever. It sure does. I'm eyeing off that Silent Mary. Now, I know uh, a long-standing member of our club, Johnny Knorr, and his wife are the mum and dad of this team display here and they've brought along their son and daughter as well so this is a, a different take on how to display your lego and i've i've seen these on display at johnny's house uh, he's had them for a few years now and he's very good at coming up with a, a variety of displays let me take that sprite can out of the so you can see mum, dad, daughter, and son have all had contributing parts to these tables. I definitely like the fact that the whole family is involved with the building process. It's a good way to bring everyone together in the household. Thanks, Katie. We looked at your build. 
Speaking of the family, we're going to quickly go past the O'Neills, who we'll talk to in a second. Uh, but we're going to make our way right through to Matt, who has run away on us. He has got some of his Star Wars stuff, which has been lit up. Erica, okay, there we go. Yeah. Uh, Erica, Matt normally builds Star Wars, but he's built something different just to confuse me, I'm almost certain. Uh, he's got, they've got some glow bricks in the Razor Crest there with those firing pistols at the front there. That's very, very cool. And I'm quite jealous of that Rancor kit, which is uh, one of the sets that after the Book of Boba Fett skyrocketed for our LEGO Star Wars investors out there. Speaking of Matt, who I must admit I thought was doing Star Wars because he is normally known for it, he has done a whole bunch of Roman builds. Roads to Rome. Very cool sign there. And hey, look at that gladiator up I hadn't noticed that before. So, mocked that up rather nicely. Now considering I'm dressed as Indiana Jones, I must go with no camels, but apparently Matt has three. Um, so <laughs> his camels are from the Prince of Persia, and Nick, I believe they're one of the more expensive Lego animals that goes goats and camels. Yes, goats and camels. Apparently broken the mold on those, and here is Matt. Speaking oh, of Matt, would you like to hey, tell us about tell Roads about your, to Rome? Tell us about your build. Uh, so Roman inspired, um, a set of vinaigrettes that start obviously from uh, forest in Germania. Was that vinaigrettes or vignettes? Oh, vignettes, sorry. Right. And then all the way through to uh, Rome itself. Nice. Yeah. I'm quite so fond of that aqueduct. Was Rome oh, yeah. built in a day or has it taken a bit longer? <laughs> no, no. No, right. Uh, we, we've had, what, two and a half years now since <laughs> COVID, so, yeah. And let's just say that the um, light bulb that we did two years ago now, I made quite good use of getting the uh, grey and dark grey um, ingots. Yeah, and even your roofs, obviously, just sourcing that many bricks, lug bulk does help out Absolutely. for um, larger collaborative builds. We, yeah. We're lucky, as part of the club, we get an option sometimes to buy bulk amounts of parts of Lego. And if you join Briz Bricks, you know, you, you get and display at shows, you can have those opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it helps a lot. Now, two things are jumping out at me that I'm gonna get you to run us through. Number one is the use of the custom parts, and number two is the use of the uh, handcuff pieces to hold the statues together. <laughs> yeah, so, so the handcuffs are holding just the arms. Uh, obviously, to have half a minifig coming out of a wall requires some, um, uh, not really, it's not really a technical thing, but just a different use of parts. So yeah, I found the handcuffs really useful for that. And then the custom figs I bought from, it wasn't brick arms, it was uh, different uh, US Brick Forge, I believe, do a lot of the... Brick Forge, yeah, might, I honestly can't remember. It's been so long ago. More nice part usage with the binoculars attached to all the columns. Hmm. And is that Cleopatra coming to visit Mark Anthony by any chance? It, it, it is. It is. Hopeless romantic. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, would you believe, though, when I bought Cleopatra, um, she came individually packed in a post pack through Australia Post. And when she arrived, the post pack was empty. Um, and then on the outside, there was a separate bag and all every individual part had gone through like a conveyor belt of Australia Post where it had been like uh, machined down. I almost cried. But luckily I went to Australia Post and they refunded the full cost of the figurine. So, wow. Yeah. Well, that's one of those strange stories that can only happen to a Lego collector. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, now we're going to move on to Brent's build, and he's not here with us, but... You may know Brent Waller, though, because he uh, has a tendency to churn out Lego Ideas sets that are yes. very popular. So there's a lot of pop culture going. Let's see if we can pick it all, okay, Harrison, you and I. we got the Sanctorium, is that how you say it? Robocop. Robocop. we got Knight Rider outside. Scooby-Doo again makes an appearance. The Seinfeld restaurant, because he did invent the Seinfeld set. He did indeed, and I believe there's a couple of Jerry Seinfelds strewn around the place. There are. This is the apartment building that Jerry lives in. Three Amigos on the top with a Predator and some Looney Tunes. And we've, let's not forget our favourite Spider-Man. Of course. We've got Central Perk. Um, I think this is Eddie Murphy's Coming to America out the front there. We've got the A-Team. Um, I'm sure she's singing something about a silly cat. That would be Friends, indeed. With Phoebe. And we've got some gremlins on the side, but I would like to point out uh, <laughs> his X-Files on, X on the top. on the top, of course. Now, Brent had that as a Lego Ideas Deadpool and actually helped represent. do quite a lot of Now, hidden around the corner, can you tell me how to get? To Sesame Street. But 
Also, <laughs> Daleks, which yes. could be very dangerous. Come around, Alan, to see the Daleks around the corner. There's so much detail here that... Now, Nick, one of the things that in. I would like to point out is the very common element of, of all Lego people's nightmares, and that is brittle, breaking brown bricks. <laughs> now, interestingly, Brent has actually chosen to use the broken parts Correct. to Look create a damaged uh, attacking animal, which Ash from the Evil what Dead the, up you there You don't know the attacking, attacking animal? That's the plant. I don't know that reference. Ah. Uh, Audrey, I think her name is, from... Little shop of horrors. There we go. There you go. I taught you something. My you dad, Muppets. Would, my dad would never forgive me if I didn't point out Statler and Waldorf. And I believe under there is also Stan Lee. Yep. Ninja Stan Turtles, Lee. which are a personal favourite of mine. There yeah, as Ghostbusters well. on the ceiling as well as the Ghostbusters car, which is Brent's other Lego yeah, I, ideas. I believe set. Brent had something to do with that. Yeah. Uh, who would know? But speaking of Ghostbusters, Brent has also designed a two scale sort of options for your Ghostbusters fans and it's all of the tools that they use to ah, yes. actually hunt so the we'll ghosts. So we'll just blow past the old fire station that Lego brought out and the Marshmallow Man and move on to all of these elements. So run us through what you know here, Harrison. I know we've got the ghost trap at the back and the goggles. And the ashtray. Most importantly they're the probably the uh, cheapest cigarettes you're ever going to be able yes. to buy built out of Lego. The, the micro chip. Uh, we've got the book there, which I believe gives them lots of instructions for catching the ghosts. Uh, and we've got the meter for reading the ghosts' movements. The Twinkie, already broken out of the wrapper. Now that wrapper's not made out of Lego, but that's an actual Twinkie wrapper. I suspect and he may have picked that up on a recent trip. Yeah, uh, he's always true. He was just over in Lego Land just last week, wasn't he? It must be nice to be high Speaking up there. Speaking of Lego Land, this is some classic Lego right here. How old school. Like, the, the, the opportunity that you get in this show to see the whole range like that was the newest lego we've virtually got like brent's idea sets and all his future the sesame street set and right back to this old school lego like this is classic stuff now i've only ever seen these once in my uh, tenure as a lego person and that was actually in someone's personal collection who is a lego reseller he came across a couple of them uh, but this is the most complete i think i've ever seen these and they are super impressive, especially if you are a history person in the LEGO community. I'd also like to point out, considering they've just released a 90-year uh, anniversary one, the original uh, Explorer. So the original case there, obviously the freshly built new one there. Or is that... The that's the original. That's the original. And it's, it looks such good, Nick. That's, that's very impressive. It's amazing the details people actually will look at and preserve but as even collectors. Even the boxes that have been, like, how old would that box? Is that like a 60-year-old, 70-year-old box? Almost 80, I think, for the early wow. brick pieces. So Lego's been around for 90 years now, I believe. And they started with timber toys, but my question for you is, Nick, are you a box keeper or a box thrower away person? I have kept all the boxes, and I don't know why. It's okay, it's something a lot of LEGO people do. I'm weird because I keep some boxes but not the others. Yeah, right. Uh, we all, all have our different reasons and whatnots for why and why we do and why we don't, but at the end of the day, it's all about the passion for the, the brick, I think, and look at the passion for the brick here. This aquarium is huge. I should also add that space is a big factor and I don't know how they store this in their house. <laughs> uh, but we do have Jodes here who has probably done a lot of the building. We're on Bruce Bricks TV, Jodes. Would you like to give us a quick rundown of what you've done here? So is this yours, Jodes, or is this Bills's as well? So Bills's is the top, right. and then both of ours for the bottom. Excellent. I would like to point out one of my favorite minifigures, and that's the Sharkhead Warrior from Lego Atlantis. Now, you guys have done a really good job of, of integrating sets. Was that something you planned to do from the start? It's always nice for the kids to be able to point out something that they can build or have at home, but it's also important to us to make our own and, and lock it up. Now I've also noticed down at the bottom here you guys have got the glow effect happening with those neon pieces. Yes. How have you guys achieved that for those people who would like to achieve something in the, the, with lighting? The UV. Yep. So we have two hidden uh, black lights. So secretly hidden up here. It's a black light that's shining that way and then hidden behind this cave is another one. Now so, while you're down here I have to yes. point out for the 80s people considering I am dressed as one of the characters from the 80s the Goonies reference on the back there <laughs> of that pirate ship. Yes we have a few different uh, 
random references dropped in. Oh yes, TARDIS because, type looking. Uh, we like to just be random sometimes. The other thing that I've noticed is the lovely shiny pearl, which you've really hidden there, but still has a great way of popping out. Yep. Uh, but for those of us who are younger viewers, they might also notice, I believe, Marlon and Dory at the front there. Yes. Right. We've got to have, Found Nemo. Got to have a little reference and just a bigger version hanging over there. Next aerial. With a bit of disco lighting happening. Do you have a favourite sort of thing that you've included? Uh, I don't know, I just love it all. <laughs> nice answer. I'm starting yeah. to see a recurring theme here with people not being able to tell us what their favourite stuff no, is. No, there's so much. But I know the favourite stuff, Lego. Well, just that's it. <laughs> I don't like my water. Yeah, well, that's a great, great water. use of loose parts, right? <laughs> that's where loose <laughs> parts are actually integrated into the build and look so good, as opposed to that realm brick that we found. It makes it really easy to oh. pick them up. How many studs are there, do you know? Oh, gosh, nuts. Nah. <laughs> Cups full. Many yes. brick link orders and pick a brick uh, hours have been spent on those. There's Singapore, uh, <laughs> California, and the Lego Dreamworld. Oh, that's awesome. There we go, bricks from all over. Yeah. The other thing that I have also build. seen are the little fish that sort of pop in and out yes. of the stuff. Yeah, and the variety of colours, right? The orange. Yeah, we tried to click them all. So the orange are the goldfish, right? Yep. And the silvers, and there's even and a light blue. blue. Yep, there we go. Yep. We've Try also got on. some of the newer and a, elements. And a green. I haven't seen the, lo the lime green one. Hit yeah, inside, I believe, that made its first oh, appearance. Right. Well done. I was going to say, I don't know. <laughs> As we move through, we Rock. have some post-apocalyptic style stuff. Who's built this? It is very hard to tell as there is no names and no people. Uh, but they have done Jokes, a fantastic job. They work here. Oh, would you like to tell us about <laughs> your build? I am not involved in the build. Sadly, I'm not sure where the lads are. But you can tell names? us who's built it. Uh, this one is by Clancy. Um, I'm, we're not related to Clancy. Right. Um, there we go. Severin and Gus are responsible for the zombie one. They have been with Bridge Bricks since 2016. Uh, no, they're the 22. This is... So this is their first right. display. Okay. The little one is the first time at Clancy's been here since, yeah, 2016. Right. Now we have mentioned them before uh, when we were talking with Matt, uh, but they have also used the brick arms pieces in this Yeah, there's a few build. elements there that are, are unique. Uh, and I think they've also used some inspiration from Brick Mania, who do a lot of work out of America set wise. Okay. Good work. Let's let's move on to the biggest part of the Bridge Bricks display. We have to stand back here, Alan, just to get the the grand scheme of this. Someone finally bought something here that's taller than you, Nick. Oh, this is a massive crane. I don't know how many feet are we up there. Ten feet? Does it? It's about four meters. Four so meters sorry, from three and a half when meters. you get it fully up. Like this, yeah. Right. Now, while we are here, we've mentioned Brent Waller, but the other LEGO Ideas project is, of course, the system here. Do you want to run us through the technic behind it? Um, okay. There is a lot of gears in it. Each um, planet is being done so that it's almost as accurate as we can physically make it. The planets are 99.8% accurate, so there's any particular planet is almost spot on. Yeah, right. The gearing uh, is almost solid through the tower of the, the design. And in fact, to get the gearing um, to the correct point, it has to be out on an angle and back in. So you have to do triangles of gears. Rather complicated. I can turn it on. I was going to show you underneath it. Oh, OK. <coughs> wow. Now this was successful but was turned down in the later process, wasn't it? In the first time around, it's since been uh, in review again now. That's fantastic. Hopefully so this gets across time. the line. Well, the ISS took three goes. So there we go. If it takes three goes, it takes three goes. <laughs> Sometimes third time is the charm, but for you guys, we're hoping the, for the second. Um, a lot of the supporters have said things like, um, doesn't matter how many times you submit it, we'll keep supporting. That's yep. good to so, hear. So, so Chris, you and Brent have worked collaboratively to get absolutely. this running. Um, yep. Uh, Brent's mostly done the lower plinth. Yep. And I've done 
pretty much the upper part of it. The, it's fantastic. So the internal gearing and that sort of thing has been my special pick. So we'll run through it quickly, won't we? And we've got the Sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Saturn with the rings, Uranus, and, and Neptune. Neptune. And we don't mention Pluto because it's no longer a well, planet, apparently. And you can't get nine on an octagon. <laughs> Good point. Well, that worked out beautifully for you. Yeah. No, it's, it's a fantastic. Bit. But okay, you're a technic genius, obviously. Speaking Look of Brent this. Waller, I've gone and commandeered oh. him from his display. Brent, Hello. welcome we to the Bridge other, Bricks channel. No, no, not really. <laughs> so, so these two geniuses get together. One's got the flair, one's got the technic, and together we get Ultra. <laughs> We've already been through other tables, so we just took a stab at it. That wasn't one of your ideas, was it? No, no. <laughs> I wish. But uh, is there anything else you want to tell us about it? I don't how, know what you said, sir. So. How deep are we into the second round of the uh, it's, it's already passed. Review, yep. I so passed it's, the the, it's just gone into review um, like Five weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, excellent. Congratulations. Yep. Yeah. So it was so a week and a day, uh, sorry, a month and a day, and last time it was a month. So, so it took us slow. one day longer to get the support the second time around. Right. Well done, so, boys. And he's um, quite complicated. Have you seen underneath yet? No, no, we so haven't gone, haven't gone for the under view to see all the gears and workings. Holy smokes. Well, I'm not the one to talk about the gear stuff because that's all Chris's expertise. Right, we were told you built the bottom plinth, but obviously he's yeah, just talking about the, the decorative well, the part. The decorative part. <laughs> he also the icing the, on the cake. He also came up with the actual idea. And okay. also the design of the planets. So these, the planets that you see here are placeholders, really. Yes. Um, the the planets that we've got designed for the Lego Ideas project have a lot more um, detail. A lot more detail. They're been. printed. Printed, um, not not stickers. No, well, they're, they're three dimensional, so they have to be printed. <laughs> Lovely. Um, but the, the sun is the ball from the Star Wars sets. Right. So, so it takes it on a whole it new should size. Be a much larger size. But I've, I've used what I have. Um, yeah, I don't have any of those ones myself. So, <laughs> so yeah. And this was the first time I'd seen it in person because we, we worked on it for yeah, like well, over a digitally year. Digitally, almost. Yeah, it's all digital. Basically. Back yeah, right. That's, that's yeah. awesome. And people are doing that a lot more, aren't they, these days, using studio and stuff like well, that it, to it made it actually design. Really easy to collaborate. You can get um, your parts, you can get any colour you need, put it all together. And once you've got that, it, it then helps you when you need to construct it physically, isn't that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that said, the, the digital model doesn't match the mechanisms inside because there is slack that you can't do digitally. Right. So there is some tweaking still required. It, but, there is. There but is. what we're saying is, in the it digital is. world these days, everyone has access to every part that's out there True. and you can really True. build whatever your imagination desires. I, I would say that it made it very easy for us to collaborate, to swap bits in and out. and. We could keep. We could actually work reasonably independently too. And Brent, we, you've said before, when you submit the idea, then that it's a whole new element to present to Lego. You can see it in 3D. You can render it. And it yeah, well, that's and particularly this one, we spent more than any other project I've done. I spent like a month doing the video for it, and that has paid off for the voting that's happened. It, despite yeah, the, you not having a Lego Ideas account, he signed up to submit this one. It's the fastest project I've ever had to 10k. Purely because that video just sells I, it I all. Definitely, absolutely. I definitely think I, that that's the, the way of the future is. Like that, we're trying to do a video here now because that's what people are in for these days. Yep. It's a digital world. Yep. yep. They like to see it, and the, the presentation that Brent did was was superb. Okay, was, let's not make this a sales anyway. pitch. Let's move on <laughs> to your on. wonderful crane oh, and keep, Thanks, keep this moving. Thank you, Brent. Yeah. Great yeah. work. What, what, what did this take? How many years have you been enlarging this? Well, this took only eight months to build. Right. Uh, except for this bit, which was made two years or three years ago and put in the cupboard because I didn't want to build it. <laughs> okay, fair enough, Chris. That's what happens. Um, it was going to be built for last year's uh, expo, but unfortunately... Yep. Um, a lot were cancelled. COVID killed that one. And we've come back bigger and better because of it. Well, that's why it only took eight months, because I had to pull my finger out and finish it. I, I've heard that a fair bit about this show. It's really it's amazing what a deadline will do for building. Exactly. The amount that's happened in the last week has just been a flurry of fingers and putting physical Lego on the table. I heard one build was done in four and a half hours. Wow. Wow. 
So the crane is fully remote controlled. Each feature um, is independent. Uh, there are eight winches. Uh, four of them are made with the main hook. Give us some movement, give us something for the camera. What can we do? So I'll blow the main hook because he's the most reliable. So he's been going up and down all day. So what's the average weight that it can actually pick up? Right, well here's where we come into a problem. I've done endurance testing on it, not load testing. Because okay. the only way to do load testing is to destruction. Yeah, until it fails. <laughs> You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that when you want to actually bring it to the show. So, so what's it carrying now? A couple, couple of kilos, well, up to five? It's had the, the shuttle on it for two months. Uh, that was my endurance testing for it, and I'd give it a bit of a tap just to see if I could break it. <laughs> Very not brave. A, not a hard no, but to see if there's any weak seat. points. Exactly. Yep. So it's had the shuttle and the Hubble um, sitting on it um, for the two months. Nice on lead up just to make sure that it's nice and safe and if it does come down during the show we'd like to get that on video if you can arrange that that'd be great <laughs> yeah yeah just full warning for that moment <laughs> never thank you very much chris. thank you so much chris what do we got what do we got now speaking of LEGO idea sets, that Tron set originally started as one and has been expanded quite a lot. And once again, you can't tell that without one of my favourite pieces, ostriches! <laughs> really? And our third appearance of Scooby-Doo! So a, a few sets here integrated into a complete build. Uh, so from the LEGO movie, uh, the Statue of Liberty set, which was designed as a bit of a... Uh, talk, talk, talk us through your build, Jess. Oh, what okay, do we got? Guys, um, Welcome to the Breeze Bricks channel. Oh, hi. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, so, yeah, what do we got here? I suppose um, I've got uh, an apocalyptic display. Uh, That's the word I was looking for, apocalyptic. Cheers. Um, so, yeah, it's a bit of a mouthful. Um, I don't know, what can I say? Growing up in the 80s and with Chernobyl and everything, I was always ready for a post-apocalyptic environment. <laughs> But, um, and Mad Max and everything. So, Absolutely. anyway, when I saw this, um, the main reason I bought it was for that one right there. <laughs> it's the only set oh, that this is. Oh, wow, that's a Harley unique in. Harley. So, yeah, my wife and I are big fans of Harley, so I bought the $500 set for her. We've okay, all so done it. We've Tinker all done oh, it. I got the Disney Castle just for Tinkerbell. I know what you're talking about. Me too. Yeah, right, Jeff. <laughs> so, I've done that. Um, so, anyway, yeah, built that. Wanted to obviously. Um, elaborate on it a bit more with the set. So, like in the movie, uh, Emmett's got his house that he built for Wildstyle, his girlfriend. It draws a lot of attention, like she said it would. Uh, they've got this weird spaceship, General Mayhem in there. Um, come check it out, and they're all just getting ready to find out what on earth is going on over here. I'd like to say how much of a brave man you are using the stilt piece to make that fly. Four oh, yeah. of them, and it's like touching a newborn baby, <laughs> okay? It is so fragile. So don't so breathe too close to it. Pretty much indeed. So Spaceman uh, Benny's had his uh, couch maked up. So yeah, so um, I had to, I want to try and mix it up a bit because I wanted to keep Emmett on his tricycle because I think that's quite a unique piece. Yeah. Um, and, but yeah, Emmett also had the uh, couch there. So I thought I'd chuck Benny on that. He's good in a mecca. So that'll do the trick there. Um, in the um, uh, Lego universe, the way I figure, if Lego has got a franchise for it, then it deserves to be here. So that's why I've got uh, Two-Face in here ah. as well, even though he's from DC, I thought, you know, he's in the Lego world. Yeah, that's um, right. But the way that I wanted to display it, I actually, um, yeah, wanted to build uh, built it so that it was mirror image, so that this, this side was originally this side and this side was originally this side. I just... Mirror, uh, reverse the instructions right. when I built it. So, so we got the monster truck on one side and the original front end loader on the other side. Yeah, so well done. mix it up a little bit. Um, what else we got there? We got the cat woman, uh, the lady with all her cats. I bought, I think, like a dozen times to get all the cats. And this shield piece, even though it's pretty insignificant, um, it's a bit, this shield piece was actually off one of my first sets, I think, from about 1984. <laughs> a medieval 
um, cart and wagon. So I thought, oh yeah, I've got to chuck that Bit in there. Bit of nostalgia, I love it. Well For done. those playing at home, that part's older than me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there you go, so there, that's with that. Um, I love Tron. So um, I bought the set three times to get three bikes and built four as Light Runner. Right. Because I think uh, that's quite um, an epic piece. Yeah, and good job. I like Tron too. Yeah, indeed. And um, the only other thing I suppose, uh, my wife and I, we had, um, she let me in charge of the wedding cake when we got married. So Big mistake, obviously. <laughs> Lego <laughs> wedding cake. Uh, that's what we had on top. Lovely. Um, got a little yeah, date printed on the back there and everything. So. Yeah, that's about some of it, and just some of the other stuff that she's um, had made for me for gifts and things. Married, you wouldn't by any chance pepper. happen to work for the Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service. Yeah, though, funny that, eh? <laughs> little bit of a... I'm a wildlife officer on a koala habitat restoration team for the department, and so I asked a good friend if he was able to uh, print on um, some uh, uh, minifig for me. So he originally did that, and... Um, I don't know if you can see that too well, but yeah, printed the um, Parks badge on the actual torso shoulder there for us. So would you say that's your SIG fig? Um, yeah, in a way. Um, right. If the one that represents myself. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and yeah, just got him to also print up the rest from the safari wagon set. Um, just in all ranges and yeah. Got what a fantastic way to make a set more personable. Oh, not yeah. to mention that's the top of our wedding cake, so my wife wears glasses and that's me, so. Yeah, good job. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, thanks very much, guys. Yeah, yeah, pleasure. Thanks, thanks for having us. Now, we're going to go to our final stop for today's episode. We'll be picking up on day two, the other half of our lovely show. Hey, we're going to end with Joe. Joe, what have you done here? Put lots of lights in things. I'd like to request the turn down of the lighting if you're going to interview Just to me here. Just pump you up a bit. It looks a lot better in the dark. Oh, we'll yeah, let okay. it in post. <laughs> uh, now, what's your favourite sort of section that you'd like to tell us about? Um, I suppose I'll be biased and say the only bit that's completely custom down the end there, which is my work truck and me and a phone tower, because that's what I do for work. We climb and inspect all the mobile phone towers. Nice personal touch. Yeah, good uh, job. Snuck that in there. Now, Joe has been uh, doing a lot of side projects as well. Uh, now, did you end up finishing off finding all of those parts that you required to get everything done, or were you rushing last minute as well? This one was actually ready for Chandler two years ago, or a year and a half ago. So this one's been complete. Packed um, and ready to roll. But my other stuff is still works in progress. So, for those of us who are joining us online, Chandler was our old venue. It's our first year on our 10th anniversary at our new venue. We are our, now at the RNA showground. Uh, we started with a hall, I believe that was 4,297 square metres, and we've timed that ridiculously or something. Our marketing man has been plugging it repeatedly. Yep. Uh, so, we've had it's a massive expansion. 10 times the size, we've got 10 years under our belt. If you just want to do a pan around for us, please, cameraman. Uh, we will show you the rest of this show tomorrow uh, in part two. Uh, thanks for tuning in and listening to the Brisbane Spiels.